In this section, we are going to learn all about working with forms in React. We are going to learn how to fetch values from the forms input elements, how to validate the form inputs, and how to handle different events on a form. And let's start this section by learning how we can fetch the values which the user has entered in the form input elements. To do that, we are going to use this simple form. Now, this is the same form which we used in our HTTP request and response section. There, we have not added any validation on the form inputs. So in this section, we will add some validations on each of these form input elements. But let's first learn how we can fetch the values which the user has entered in these input elements. So for example, let's say if the user goes ahead and enters some value in these input elements. And when he clicks on this create user button, this form will be submitted. And when this form will be submitted, we want to gather all these values which the user has entered in these input elements. And we want to store it in an object. Let's see how we can do that. In order to keep things simple, let's first start with only one input element. So I'm going to work with this first name input element. So I will use this input element to fetch the value from this input element, add validation and handle different events. Later in this section, we will do the same thing for other input elements. Let's go to VS Code. And here I'm in the app component. And in this app component, I'm using this user form component. And if I go to this users form component, here we have a form and inside this form we have some input elements here i am going to work with only this input element this first name input element so let's see how we can fetch the value which the user has entered in this first name input element and i'm going to show you two ways to do that you can either use state or you can use ref Let's first see how we can use states to fetch the value which the user has entered in the input element. For that, first we need to import use state from this React library. Then we need to create a state. So here I'm going to use the array destructuring syntax. And here I'm going to create a state. I will call it maybe first name and I'll create a state updating function. I will call it set first name. And to this, let's assign use state. And initially, let's set this first name state with empty string so let's pass that empty string to this use state function then let's say we want to update this state with the value which the user has entered in the first name input element for each keystroke so if we want to update this state for each keystroke here we can listen to on change event and to this on change we can assign an event handler function let's call it on f name so first name changed let's go ahead and let's create this event handler function and let's move this function after this state and since this is an event handler function whenever this on change event will happen this function will receive that event object and on this event object we can access the value which the user has entered in this first name input element by accessing it using event.target.value. So this expression here is going to return us the value which the user has entered in the first name input element. And we want to use this value and we want to set this first name state with that value. So here let's use this state updating function and let's pass this event.target.value to this set first name state updating function. So here we are trying to update this first name state with this value the value which this expression is going to return now let's also go ahead and let's handle the form submission event so on this form i'm going to listen to on submit event so basically i'm listening to submit event and when this form is submitted that means when this button will be clicked this create user button this form will be submitted so when this form will be submitted we want to execute some logic so to this on submit i am going to assign another event handler function Let's call this function on submit handler and let's go ahead and let's create this on submit handler. Again, since this on submit handler is an event handler function, it is going to receive the event object. In this case, the submit event object. And we have learned before that when we use a button inside a form and when that button is clicked, it submits the form. Basically, it sends a request to the server and then it reloads the page and when the page is reloaded all our states are reset and we don't want that behavior 
Here, when this button will be clicked, we don't want to submit the form. We don't want this page to be reloaded. So that's the default behavior of a button. So what we want is here, we want to prevent that default behavior. For that, on this event object, we can call prevent default. This prevent default is a function which prevents the default behavior. And then let's go ahead and let's simply try to log the value stored in this first name state. All right, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let's open developer console here. Let's clear everything. In the first name, let's enter some value. Maybe I'll enter my name. And let's click on this create user button. So when I click on this create user button, you can see that the value which we have entered inside this first name input element that has been logged here. If I enter something else, maybe John, and then if I click on this create user, you will see that John has been logged here. So this is how we can access the value which the user has entered in an input element using state. Okay, so here we are using a state to capture the value to fetch the value which the user has entered in an input element. Another way is by using refs. So for that, let's import use ref here. Then we need to create a variable. Let's call this variable maybe f name ref. And to this, let's assign use ref. Then on the first name input element, we need to use this ref attribute. And to that, we need to assign this f name ref. Okay, now inside this on submit handler, instead of logging the first name state, let's try to log the f name ref dot current dot value. So here, let's say console dot log f name ref. So this holds a reference to this input element. Basically, this f name ref dot current it holds a reference to this input element. In this case, this first name input element. And on that, we can call this value property to access the value which is entered in this first name input element. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me refresh the page here. Let's clear everything. Let's enter some value in this first name input element. So maybe let's enter Steve. Let's click on this create user button and you can see Steve has been logged here. So using refs also, we can access the value which the user has entered in an input element. Now, in reality, you would use one of the two approaches which I have shown you here. So the question is, which approach should you use? Now, it totally depends what you are planning to do with the entered value. If you are interested only in the final value which the user has entered in the form's input when the form is submitted, using ref might be better because updating a state variable on every keystroke will overkill the state as we are not interested in the value which the user has entered in each keystroke. We are only interested in the final value. So in that case, using refs is a better approach. But if you are interested in the value for each keystroke, for example, let's say you want to do some instant validation on each keystroke. In that case, using a state is a better approach because with ref, you can't really do that. Another scenario where you would want to use state instead of ref is when you want to reset the form. So currently what is happening is when I click on this create user button, it logs the value which the user has entered in this input element but we still see that value in this input field. But let's say our requirement is such that when this create user button is clicked, we want to log this value or let's say we want to do something with this value and we also want to reset this form. That means this input element should become empty. In that case, using state is a better approach. For that, all we have to do is we have to use this set first name, this state updating function and there we can pass empty string. Okay, so for now, let me comment this console.log statement and let me uncomment this console.log statement. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me refresh the page here. Let's clear the console. Let me enter some value here. I'll enter my name. And when I click on this create user button, you will notice that that value has been logged here. But we still see this value in this input field also. That's because here we have updated this first name state with this empty string but we also need to use it. So here on this first name input element, we need to specify another attribute, which is value. And to that, we can bind this first name state. Okay, let's save the changes now. Let's go to the web page. Let me clear the console here. Let me enter a value. Let's say John. Let's click on this create user button. 
So here you can see John is locked and this input element has also become empty. So basically we have reset this input element. Now we can of course do the same thing with ref. So now let me comment this line and this console.log statement and let's uncomment this console.log statement. And in order to reset the value using refs, all we need to do is we need to set this fnameref.current.value to empty string. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Here, let's enter some value, maybe Steve. Let's click on this create user button. So Steve has been locked and this input element has also been reset. Okay, so we can also do the same thing using ref. But this is not the ideal way of doing this because here we are trying to update the DOM directly and that is something we should always avoid. We should never update the DOM directly. We should leave that up to the React. React should be the only thing manipulating the DOM. Therefore, this approach is not ideal. Okay, let me comment this line here. Let's also comment this line. And in this section, I'm going to use state for fetching the values from the form input element. This is all from this lecture. In the next lecture, let's learn how we can add validation on a form input.